The SOA recently announced some big changes to how you can earn credit for some of the SOA actuarial exams. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly how things are going to change and what this means for aspiring actuaries that are deciding to pursue the career. And actually, I'm not really crazy about this new method, so I'll tell you why at the end. I'm Bria, an associate of the Society of Actuaries and leader of the Actuary Accelerator community. A member of the Actuary Accelerator community recently posted about some new changes that are coming to the exam system for the Society of Actuaries. And inevitably, this brought up a lot of questions for our members and some great conversation too. If you heard about this announcement or maybe you're just finding out about it now, I'm sure you are going to have questions as well. And this video is going to answer them in the best way that I know right now, because actually this is a very new announcement. There hasn't been a lot of details released. So I only have what is available to me. I only have the information available to me. And that is what I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. So starting in fall of 2021, so later this year, the SOA is actually going to allow you to get credit for some actuarial exams through school. In order to get these credits, you will have to get high enough grades in certain courses at certain schools. So there are quite a few requirements. I'll explain more about that in just a few seconds. But right now, the SOA has actually only released that for sure, exam FM and SRM will be exams that are included in this new system. They have specifically said that exam P will not go to this system and you will still have to take that exam. If you're in Canada, this is something that has actually been an option for quite a while now, probably four or five years, but it's something that is completely new to the United States. This new program is called the University Earned Credit Program and it is the first component of what the SOA is calling a groundbreaking, modularized, and modernized new educational system that allows aspiring actuaries to get the requirements that they need in alternative ways than just passing exams and going through the different courses. So again, I'm not entirely sure how this whole system will work in the end. This is just the first component that they have announced and more is to be announced this summer. Okay, so here's how it's going to work. There are going to be universities selected throughout Canada and the US and even some in other countries. I think uh, Australia was on the list and China. They all may have universities that will allow this program as well. So the SOA will essentially consider these schools centers of actuarial excellence. And if a school is a center of actuarial excellence, they will have certain courses within their educational system that will allow you to get credit for certain exams exams, most likely. And if it's anything like it is here in Canada, it's going to mean that you have to get certain grades, high enough grades in certain courses that the SOA has deemed good enough and high enough quality in order to suffice for that actuarial exam. So it could actually be that it's only one course that you have to take for the exam. But more likely, I would say that you're going to have to pass maybe two or three different courses and get high enough grades in those courses in order to get the full credit. And and it sounds like you might also have to get a good enough grade on the exams in those courses as well. So they're going to be, it sounds like, looking at the exams and the course overall and your marks in those different courses and exams in order to determine if you will be able to get credit for the exams. Now, like I said, so far, they've only announced exam FM and SRM as the exams that will definitely be part of this program, but it sounds like more are going to be announced. So what does this mean for you? an aspiring actuary. Well, there are a few things and it really depends where you are on your actuarial journey. If you are someone that is just considering the career right now, then you might have more reason to go to one of these centers of actuarial excellence for your education. In the past, I have not made a big deal about getting an actuarial science degree because it limits you in some ways and there's other reasons too. But now, since you have to be an actuarial science student at one of these centers of actuarial excellence, in order to be able to get these credits, it might just give you more reason to pursue an actuarial science degree at one of these schools. If you are already in school, then check out the SOA website to see if your school is going to be one of the centers of actuarial excellence. Like I said, there are many of them all across Canada and the US and some in other countries. So your school may be one of the ones that is going to be a center of actuarial excellence. And honestly, after this announcement, I think there will probably be more schools that apply 
to become centers of actuarial excellence in order to offer this to their students. So what that means for you is if your school is considered a center of actuarial excellence, then you may be able to get these credits without having to study for the exam in addition to all your schoolwork. However, do keep in mind that some employers may not give the same weight to these exam credits that are earned through school as they would for the actual exam. And that's just because up until now, all employers have known is the actuarial exam system. So to bring in this new element or this new way of getting the exam credit, it just may not sit right with them. Every employer is going to be different though. And over time, they'll probably get more used to it and it will become more commonplace. So it'll be more likely that they will eventually give the same weight if they're not already going to do that. Another thing this means for everyone that is pursuing the actuarial career is that this might increase competition over time. Whenever the Society of Actuaries makes it easier to get into the actuarial career and become qualified, it's going to inevitably make it easier for students to get these exams and then get into the actuarial job market, right? So by doing this, it actually will probably increase competition a little bit. Now that being said, right now there are only 33 centers of actuarial excellence and like I said there might be more in the future and that is as of May 2021 so the number of students actually going to those schools being in the actuarial science program and getting good enough grades is probably not going to be enough to significantly increase the competition now before I tell you why I don't like this new system I want to bring two things to your attention just to make sure it's extra clear one is that you do have to be an actuarial science student at these schools in order to qualify for for these exam credits. That means you can't be in a different program or some other department of the school. You actually have to be in the actuarial science program in order to be able to take the courses and get credit for them. That doesn't mean that someone that is not in the actuarial science program can't take those courses. They just won't be able to get credit for them because they're not in the actuarial science program. At least that is my understanding right now based on what the SOA has released so far. The second thing I want to bring your attention to is that this is for SOA exams, Society of Actuaries. CAS, the Casualty Actuarial Society, is completely separate from the Society of Actuaries. If you haven't already watched it, I will link that video up here so that you can go watch it now and understand what the difference between CAS and SOA is so that that will help you gain a better understanding of what path you might want to take in the future. Of course, the first three exams, exam P, FM, and IFM, are jointly offered by both the Society of Actuaries and CAS, so no matter which path path you decide to take, you will be able to still get credit for potentially exam FM through this system. And FM is one of the exams that is offered and accepted by both the Society of Actuaries and CAS. All the other exams that they have announced so far, which is really only SRM, is only a Society of Actuaries exam. That one does not count for CAS. So if you are someone that ends up going the CAS route, then some of these exams that you can get through this program may not even count towards your actual degree in the end. Okay, so I said that I am not loving these changes. I am actually not very happy with them at all. Let me explain why, and I would love to know what you think about them down below in the comments too. But first, hear me out. Personally, I think this change degrades the value that aspiring actuaries and qualified actuaries put on the ASA and the FSA designations. If you think to the extreme for a minute, let's think about this example. Let's say that you could get credit for all of the SOA actuarial exams through school. And again, this this is not what is happening right now, but let's just say that was the situation. You could get all credits for actuarial exams just by going to school and getting enough grades, high enough grades. If you're like me, then it just wouldn't feel like as much of an accomplishment if you get all the credits through school that you are going to do anyway. There's just nothing above and beyond what you would be doing anyway in order to get this ASA or FSA designation. Right now, there's a whole bunch of other requirements. There's a whole bunch of exams and they're very difficult exams that you have to pass pass in order to become fully qualified. And if people could just go to school and get those credits anyway, then in my opinion, it really degrades the value of the designation at all. This is the same thing that I thought when this new system came to Canada. And it's the same thing I think now when it's coming to the US. In addition, like we talked about earlier, it's also going to be increasing competition a little bit. And as you already know, the competition for actuarial positions is already fairly high. So we don't need this added on top of that. Okay, so what do you 
you think? Does this frustrate you? Do you like the new system? Is this going to change your decision to become an actuary? Let me know down in the comments. I want to know what you think about this new change and if you are happy about it. And again, if you're not 100% sure on the difference between the SOA and CAS, go check out my video all about this subject. And I even have a video that talks about the salary differences between the two, which aren't significant, but it's something you might be interested in. So you can go check that video out as well. I will link those down in the description. And hey, if this video brought value to you, if you liked it, even if you didn't like what I talked about, but if you liked the video because it gave you a lot of good information, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.